and I was like, oh, I really, really need to just make my own. If you're like a whiz at this, you're probably like, this is so basic. But if you're new, maybe this has given you some inspiration to things you can make at home too. is going to be the beginner's guide to start saving money by making things at home. If this sort of content is something that interests you, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and stick around. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to do it right now. I would so appreciate that. And I always love when I get comments, I actually answer every single comment that I get. So leave me a comment down below about any of these things or anything that you make that you think is super easy for a beginner. Okay. So I have about 13 things. I think that I make from home and they're in no particular order but I'm just gonna go through them and then show you guys some clips if I have them of the certain things that I'm talking about so the first thing is laundry detergent I actually made laundry detergent a few weeks ago and went through it pretty quickly it was made of water Castile soap I think I'm saying it right baking soda and salt and then I actually was reading on this bottle and it says that you can just use this like straight it says a third to a half of a cup of soap for larger loads so so recently I have just been using this soap for laundry detergent it is super easy this soap is one of the top ingredients I would say you should buy if you want to make things at home because this soap is in so many DIY recipes and there's so much that you can do with it it actually also gives you like a list of things that you can do with this soap the label is packed with information but it gives you some ideas of what you can do some ideas are you can wash, you can use it as like a body wash, you can use it just in like a soap dispenser, you can use it for dishes, you can use it for laundry, you can mop the floor with it, you can wash your dog, you can remove residue from fruit and vegetables, you can use it as an all-purpose cleaner and you can even use it as shaving cream. So. This is pretty amazing. The first thing that I'm doing is not buying laundry detergent anymore. This is significantly cheaper than buying laundry detergent. I will leave a link down below for the recipe that includes like the water, baking soda, and salt as well if you're interested in looking into that. But now I just use this. The second thing I have been making is lotion. So very recently I was purchasing tallow balm, tallow oil, tallow lotion. And I was like, you know what? This is so expensive for like a little bottle would be like $30. And um, I get it because I was buying things that had like premium ingredients, but I figured there had to be a way to do it yourself. And I was right. So recently I made body butter that I've been using on myself and the girls and my husband uses it. It is just tallow and olive oil. And I whipped it in my kitchen aid stand up mixer. You can also add essential oils. Eden's skin in particular is a bit sensitive right now, so I didn't want to put even any essential oils in there, but next time I might add something. I also have a tallow oil that I bought that had cocoa in it, and the lotion just like smells like chocolate when you put it on you, and it's kind of amazing, so I might try that as well. Let me show you the tallow that I buy, and I will also link it down below, because it's a really great tallow for uh, making your own lotion. So this is the tallow that I've been using. It's 100% grass fed tallow. And I also think that this is one of the top ingredients you should have if you want to make things at home. So essentially you just get it warm enough to get it to be liquid. You add in about a fourth of a cup of olive oil into about three fourths cups of tallow and then you mix it around. You can just pour it into um, a container and let it dry just or um, cool just like that and it will be sort of hard but you can use it almost like a balm or you can let it dry in the KitchenAid um, stand-up mixer bowl and then just put the mixer on once it's dried and cooled and it turns into whipped tallow balm so or whipped body butter so that is what I have been doing and using it I use it on my face my skin all over my body it is very safe you can use it on your lips I love using it and letting um, Eden try to put it on herself as well because she loves to put lotion on but she also sometimes eats it and so tallow 
and olive oil are completely edible and I feel totally fine with her trying out the lotion herself. The next thing that I make, and this is probably the first thing that I made on this list, is my own toothpaste. So what we do now is we wet our toothbrush with water. Then we put on some food grade hydrogen peroxide to like clean the bristles. And it also gives it a good taste, I think, in my opinion, once I mix it with the other stuff. And then we literally just take a big glass jar and put baking soda and salt in there. Much less salt than baking soda, but to be honest, you can just play around with the mixture. I don't measure it. I just put a lot of baking soda and sprinkle some salt in there and mix it all around. We take a little spoon and put some of that on our toothbrush after it has the hydrogen peroxide on it, and that is it. Your mouth feels so clean after you use this toothpaste, and it's actually really healthy for your teeth, and there's no bad ingredients or anything like that, and it's all cheap stuff. Baking soda and salt are two of the other things you should have on hand if you want to DIY stuff because they are in so many recipes. So again, that's the Castile soap, um, the tallow, baking soda, and salt are great to have on hand and really cheap ingredients for some super healthy stuff. The next thing that I make is scalp treatment. So I have recently been doing this because I've had some dandruff or just like itchy scalp and then also my hair has been falling out post COVID and I've heard that this particular treatment actually helps with hair growth as well and it is a green tea scalp treatment and I love it. I can tell a huge difference in the days following me using this treatment. So essentially you boil some green tea, um, you let it cool off a little bit and then our trusty friend, the soap, uh, you add a little bit of this. I think it was like a tablespoon to two. I, I just like um, made a mug full of green tea. I put two tea bags in it to make it a little more concentrated. Put about a tablespoon of this in there. And then I also added uh, some peppermint, a few drops of peppermint essential oil. That is optional but I loved how it made my um, hair smell. And then when you get in the shower, wet your hair and then you just pour it. It's a little difficult, but like pour it onto your scalp and just kind of like scrunch. It'll get like in your hair and just kind of use your hair to get it all over your scalp and let it sit there for like five to 15 minutes. And then do your regular, wash it out, do your regular shampoo and conditioner. It is amazing. And I'm gonna do it multiple times a week. I've done it two or three times now, but I'm gonna continue doing it because I feel like my scalp does tend to get sort of dry. Um, but green tea and the soap and the peppermint is like perfect for it. Next thing that I make myself is spray cleaners. Instead of buying all purpose cleaners, we never use like Clorox or anything with heavy bleach or anything that's like very um, harsh chemicals. And so essentially what you can do is you can peel an orange that you are planning to eat, put the orange peels in vinegar. Vinegar is I think the last thing on my list. Yes, the last thing on my list that you should have on hand for all DIY stuff. So you put it in um, a closed container. I use a glass jar um, with vinegar and let it sit in a cool, dry place for a few weeks to get some of the citrus infused into the vinegar. And then you mix it into a spray bottle with half vinegar, half water, and voila, you've got yourself a spray cleaner. I clean my bathrooms with it, I clean my kitchen with it. Everything is able to be clean with that spray cleaner and it smells wonderful. Okay, the last thing that I make that I DIY that's not like food related is bug spray for my garden. So I have some aphids on my tomato plants, which makes me really sad. I just saw some beetles on my zinnias this morning. So I have been spraying my plants with a homemade bug spray. And essentially I use filtered water. I use, of course, my Castile soap and a dash of cayenne. And then I just like go to town on the plants. It is going to kill the bugs, but it is not gonna kill your plants. It is not gonna ruin your vegetables or your fruit. And so that is a much more organic option than getting some sort of harsh pesticide or something that would leave residue on the plant that would be harmful to you once you eat the fruit or the vegetable. I'm sorry, I actually have one more thing that is sort of, it's not quite DIY, but it sort of is, and that is glasses, glass jars, cups, containers. As you can tell from a lot of the clips that you've already seen, we 
reused glass jars that we actually get from our Organic Valley Ghee. So we use Ghee, I've actually bought it in bulk, and it is the best glass jar because no part of the label has any adhesive to the glass. It's just all easily ripped off and you can take it off. There's no sticky parts on the glass whatsoever. The lid has no sticky parts, no labels, nothing. Like I hate when you, we've tried to use like our honey jars before and stuff, but the label is stuck to it and it just leaves this sticky residue and it's, ugh, it's not good. So we probably have upwards of like 10, 15 ghee jars now with lids that we use for a whole bunch of different things including our drinking glasses. So that is something that I sort of DIY. I do not buy drinking glasses. We just recycle our ghee containers for everything. Okay, so now let's move on to food related items that I used to buy but now I make at home. The first one is crackers, sourdough discard crackers. I will leave the recipe down below. Olivia loves snacks. She wants a snack almost all the time and normally it's like, okay, I have crackers or pretzels from the store or cereal or something just with a crunch that she really likes, but I feel so much better when I have made her sourdough crackers, not only because it saved us money, but it is also much healthier because I know it doesn't have seed oils in it or any other sort of ingredients that I don't like. So I will link it down below. It's pretty easy to make. It's not like the easiest thing, but it's not that difficult. And you can make a big batch of dough and just keep it in your fridge. I actually have one more like round circle in the fridge that could be made into crackers that I'm probably gonna do today. So I do one every like two days and that keeps her snack uh, desires fulfilled and I don't need to bring home boxes of like Annie's bunny crackers because she loves the sourdough crackers. The next thing that I make myself is bread. That's a pretty like popular one I would say. A lot of people have been making their own sourdough bread. I'm not an expert at it but we have not bought bread in a long time. So yeah I've been making my own bread. I make just plain sourdough loaves and then my favorite loaves to make that are a little bit different are I add in when I'm doing like the laminating the dough and making it into its final its final loaf. I like to add in uh, butter with cinnamon and sugar and make a cinnamon sugar loaf. And I also like to do um, cheddar sometimes. I also like to do olive oil and rosemary sometimes. So those are some ideas to try out if you are a sourdough baker. Next thing I make myself um, and I want to do more often is butter. You can do this with raw cream. So I need to actually get some more raw cream before I can make more butter. However, it is really easy. Once you have raw cream, you can just throw it in your KitchenAid stand mixer with the paddle and put it on for a few minutes and it's amazing first it turns into like whipped cream and I was so tempted to just stop there and eat all the whipped cream but if you keep going eventually it turns into butter and buttermilk and the butter tastes like no other it is so 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 good the homemade butter and you also get buttermilk to make like buttermilk pancakes or whatever else you could use that for so I definitely suggest looking into making butter if that's not something you've tried before it's really easy it's one ingredient and it's it's amazing. Next is bone broth and this is something I used to purchase all the time and really high quality bone broth is very expensive to buy and really inexpensive to make. So we actually have a farm box that we've been getting and a meat box that we've been getting for the past few months and sometimes I'm able to order like chicken feet or something that's like bony but also has some like cartilage in it, some gelatin and some collagen and all that good stuff. So I have been making my own. The last batch of bone broth that I made, I just made with chicken feet, just like a huge pack of chicken feet that I got. That was the only meat in there. Um, no, actually I'm lying. I'm so sorry. That was meat stock that I made. The last bone broth that I made, I had just been saving bones in a little pouch in the freezer for like a few weeks. And then I was like, all right, I'm out of my meat stock that I made with the chicken feet. So I'm going to make some bone broth. And I just took the bones out. It was a mix of chicken and beef bones. And um, I made bone broth with it. It was so good. And it's so gelatinous. Like it's in a pitcher in my fridge right now. Actually, let me show it to you. Let me see if it will show up on the camera. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell. And you can see some of it is like stuck up here. Are you going to be able to see it? I don't think so, but it's so jiggly. It's so, so gelatinous. And I actually just had a cup of it this morning. I warmed it up and just drank it and it was so good. I also add like a scoop of it into every time I make rice or potatoes or anything that I'm cooking um, on the stove that is cooked in water. I add in a little bit of bone broth and you can't even really taste it, but the girls eat it. Andrew eats it. It's so healing and so wonderful. And if you don't 
feel like you're into just drinking straight bone broth, you can definitely add it into something that you're cooking. Potatoes and rice um, and those like starchy sides are the easiest way I've found to add it in. But we also do make bone broth hot chocolate. And recently I actually made popsicles out of bone broth hot chocolate, which is my next item that I've been making instead of buying. Olivia will eat like seriously five or six popsicles a day if I would let her. And popsicles can get really expensive if they are high quality, good ingredients as well. So I have been making them from home. My favorite to do is just to um, defrost some frozen fruit overnight in the fridge and then throw a little bit of heavy cream in there, blend it up and put it in the popsicle molds. It is so delicious. Eden also loves them, which is great. And it's a great sweet treat for myself too when I just have a little bit of a sweet tooth. This was my first time making the bone broth hot chocolate into um, popsicles and it's so good. I love having it in the middle of the day when I want a little something, again, sweet, but that I know is nutritious. So that is really good as well. I'd like to throw in like some chocolate collagen powder or maybe probiotics or just something and mix it in there that you would normally like mix into a smoothie for the girls to get a little extra nutrition in their popsicles. And the last thing that I've been making instead of buying is waffles. Olivia loves waffles as a snack as well. And there was a box that I was buying from our local grocery store that had pretty much okay ingredients, but I think I want to say it either had soybean oil or canola oil or some sort of seed oil. And I was like, oh, I really, really need to just make my own waffles and freeze them. And I had two friends who so kindly allowed me to borrow their waffle makers. One is like a huge waffle maker and one is a little mini one. And so I've been making waffles and freezing them or putting them in the fridge. Cause to be honest, they're usually eaten within like a day or two. There's no reason to really freeze them but making them makes me feel so much better. I will link the recipe that I've used down below. It is so much healthier than buying it from the store. So those are the food things that I've been making from scratch so far. Again, if you're like a whiz at this, you're probably like, this is so basic. But if you're new, maybe this has given you some inspiration to things you can make at home too. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, please do it now. Really quickly before we finish, there are a few things that I haven't done um, as far as DIY and that I've looked into that I don't want to make. Um, let me know down below if you've done any of these things. Soap. I told Andrew I wanted to make a soap and then when I started looking it up I realized you have to use what's called lye and I don't know the video I was watching it was like you need to put on protective eyewear and gloves and have something you know if it touches your skin you have to have something ready there to like wash it off and vinegar and all this stuff and I was like all right this sounds a little too dangerous with two like little kids around I'm not gonna do this we'll just buy the soap so let me know if you've ever made soap the other thing I thought you know what if this is so expensive let me see if I could do it myself that shampoo I have a wonderful shampoo that I use it's called under Luna I'll link that down below but it's very expensive and it is the cleanest shampoo I have ever found I looked at the ingredients I was like this would be way too much it's just a huge long long ingredient list but all really natural organic like naturally found things but I would just need to purchase so many ingredients to make me own the shampoo so I was like scrap that I'm not doing that I'll just keep buying under Luna um, and then there are a few things that I am looking forward to doing let me know also in the comments down below if you have ever done these Hopefully soon I wanna make my own ice cream. I want to make my own plants. So essentially I wanna to learn to propagate plants. I tried this week and failed, so I need to try again. Um, but I have some Russian sage, like bush plant things out back that I actually wanna plant in front of our house and I don't wanna buy them. So I wanna to try to propagate and learn how to do that. I want to make my own deodorant. I've heard there are some really easy DIY recipes. So once my deodorant runs out, I wanna try that. And then I also wanna to try to make herbal salves. I think I was watching a video and the lady said salve. Is it salve or salve? It was basically made out of tallow and either coconut oil or olive oil and then some different herbs that you can infuse into it that would be helpful for like shallow wounds or brush burns or things like that. So I'm definitely looking forward to finding a recipe for that and doing it to have on hand for first aid stuff. I hope this was a helpful video. Let me know if you end up trying anything and until next time, bye guys. Oh,